Hey there, welcome to the One Brain Four Wheels channel. It's the Gear Bear here, like always. And today's video is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna start out a little bit different in the fact that this is actually a little introduction for what you guys are about to see. All right, so first things first, let's address the big elephant in the room or the lack of an elephant in the room. And that is, why am I standing in an empty garage? If you guys have watched a lot of my videos in the past year, you might have noticed that this was kind of the permanent home of the OG Fiero for the channel, the 1988 Notchback. And now it's empty, and for the last six months or so, this was its final resting place since the engine had seized. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you guys look at it, that Fiero is actually no longer a part of the One Brain Four Wheels channel. So yeah, about two weeks ago or so, I um, actually sold it to a 20-something kid um, a couple towns over from me. Um, he's actually a student learning to become a master mechanic. And so his plan with that vehicle is actually going to be to restore it and actually put a, a refurbished or a rebuilt Iron Duke into it and maybe later on kind of swap in something with a little bit more performance. Uh, but anyhow, I'm kind of excited to see how that goes. I'm going to try to keep in touch with him and maybe I can kind of post some photos or videos so you guys can kind of see, you know, what he's doing with it. And uh, it's, it's great to be able to think about that car actually getting back on the road since he can kind of do stuff that I can't really do because um, he's got a little bit more experience and uh, he's got you know, a little bit more ambition, I think, uh, with that car, um, given it was kind of a little rough around the edges. Uh, but I am really excited that he's going to go ahead and make something of that. So that's awesome. And that's the update with that car. However, I have a lot of footage, well, not a lot of footage, but I have some footage of various little projects I did with that car back before it actually broke down on me. Um, and I was kind of thinking about, you know, whether or not I would post those videos or not. And this is going to be one of those videos, actually. So as you guys can already tell from reading the title of this video, uh, this footage is going to be focused on working on the Fiero center stack, uh, mostly the substructure and kind of supporting structure where like the AC and the radio are mounted to. Um, so even though this may not be entertaining or really flow with the actual happenings of the channel, I hope you guys still find this footage at least a little bit helpful or interesting. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video, guys. Hey there, welcome to One Brain Four Wheels channel. It's the Gear Bear here, like always, and today we're in front of the Pontiac Fiero. And like usual with this vehicle, uh, there's always something to be fixed on it. Uh, specifically in today's video, we're going to be talking about the center stack, which you can see I have sufficiently taken apart into many little bits and pieces, all scattered throughout this area of the passenger compartment. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about an issue I was having with the AC controls right there and how they're very wibbly wobbly. And unfortunately, it's broken um, beyond just, you know, fixing a bolt or two. Um, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and try to figure out how I'm going to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at it a little closer. The reason why I had everything off was because this AC controller, you know, I don't have everything hooked up properly, but it doesn't really matter because essentially, imagine everything is bolted in completely in here. When you adjust the AC, the HVAC controls, it wibbled around this much. You're probably thinking, oh, maybe you just don't have something like bolted in or whatever, or something's not connected. The problem was, was that the inside of the plastic behind all this stuff, so essentially, this whole center stack is one continuous piece of plastic. And then there is a metal frame behind this upper section, but all that is just a, one big piece of plastic. You can't buy it you know, from GM or anything anymore. Um, so most likely if it's broken, which a lot of these are because it's this very brittle plastic, um, you really just have to fabricate something to fix the issue that you have. It could be broken anywhere along here. Mine just happens to be broken at the AC thing. Um, and my problem is that because those mounting holes are broken, you can't actually mount the AC controller in there anymore. So let's go ahead and take all this stuff off and I'll go ahead and show you guys up close and personal where the problem actually lies. So you guys get a treat because you're gonna get the expedited removal process for all of this stuff. So first thing, take off your uh, little shift knob thing. Then this thing has, let's see, it's got some screws up in here, I believe. Yeah, so you take out your, um, your ashtrays and then there's two screws, one on each end on both sides. This whole thing then pops up like so. There we go, nice and quick. Then this thing, I don't even think is bolted in actually. This just comes right out. Go ahead and place it back here. There you go, nice and safe. Now we get to this guy. So you've got your four screws in each corner and you can go ahead and remove this face plate. That looks nice, great, great. And then finally, uh, this thing in here is mounted to this metal frame. So the plastic out here mounted to the inner metal frame with a screw here and a screw here. You undo those and 
let's see, I think, I think that's it, yeah. And then this whole thing should come up. Come on. There we go. Nice and out. That's great, that's great. And that looks beautiful, okay. Now, pretend that thing is on. This is what you guys are left with. So you got your radio, your AC, and this metal bracket, which mine was connected or bolted in with these two bolts up here, and then it had uh, one on each side down here. Um, my problem is that my AC controller, like I said, it has no mounts anymore. So I went ahead and got a flashlight so if you guys can see everything. But if we kind of look in here, I'm gonna move the camera so you guys might hear a little noise. Okay, right, it's way too bright. Let's go ahead and move this. All right, so the AC controller has two bolts on this side. You know, I'm not liking this flashlight thing. Let's see, uh, diffused light, Diffu okay, let's see. Perfect, now you guys can see. So the AC controller is held in with a bolt here, here, and then on this side, it's got one bolt here. Now, first of all, let's just go ahead and remove this piece of metal. So there would be, uh, you can kind of see the holes here, or the, the wear marks. Uh, this had four uh, bolts in it holding it in. Go ahead and take that off. Now you've got full access to this plastic, which by the way, let's just go ahead and take a look at that engineering beauty right there. So you can see how that's black plastic um, opposed to the gray plastic on the dash. So that plastic all the way where my light is shining, that fr plastic frame is continuous all the way going back back here. So that's all one big chunk of plastic that's very brittle and uh, it tends to break. And unfortunately, like I said, you can't buy that on eBay or anything. Maybe you get it from a junkyard, but honestly, they're probably all going to look very similar to mine, which is not very good. Um, and I'm actually missing a piece of plastic up on the top above the AC controller um, that should have been part of that frame. And then what you guys can see here is that huge gap. That should have some plastic, you know, connecting bits to it. And you guys can see if I go ahead and put this into the position where it should be, there's there's nothing here anymore. It's all broken off. Um, and that was my problem. And that's why when I bought this car, I thought like, oh, maybe something's just missing, a bolt or something, because I went to go ahead and change uh, the speed, or not the speed, the temperature for the air. And it just kind of flopped around. You could get it to work, but it moved. So you knew it was something was broken. Turns out it nothing was mounted because there was no mounting points anymore. Um, so now what I kind of have to do is make either a frame or some type of other mount for this thing so that way I can mount the AC to whatever I build and then mount whatever I build to either whatever plastic is left here or um, perhaps mount it to the metal frame that does have mounting points elsewhere in the plastic that are still strong. That's kind of the problem we're left with and that's what I have to ponder and kind of think about that until I want to move forward with this project. And at this point, it looks a little bit daunting just because I don't really like working with plastic. And unfortunately, that's all that this thing is made out of. Um, and it's just, it's really brittle and it's kind of a pain. I don't want to break anything because then, you know, you break more of this stuff. There's not a lot to work with already. So that's the problem I'm left with. <sighs> Give me strength. All right, so I've had a few weeks to kind of think about how I want to solve this problem with the Fiero's uh, HVAC controller uh, not being able to bolt in anymore since, like I already showed you guys, um, the plastic surround that that would normally be fastened into is totally crumbled. Uh, so my initial thought was, okay, I want to build a metal frame. Uh, I'll go ahead and stick it in there, mount it in there somehow to the body of the car, and then mount my HVAC controller to that. So I went ahead and went to Home Depot and bought this little stick of aluminum. And I thought, okay, maybe I can make some brackets. And I went ahead and bent some using no specialty tools or anything, just what I had in my garage. Um, the, uh, what's that called? The vise, the vise. I put it in a vise and just banged it out with a hammer. And those just really didn't fit right in there. Uh, this metal was just, it's too thick. Uh, the it's too small of a gauge. Um, so it's really hard to manipulate. So yeah, so then I ditched that idea. So then my next thought was, okay, well if that metal was a little bit too thick to work with, let's try something a little thinner. So I got some sheet metal today and I ended up making this, which yes, people that know how to work with metal are gonna laugh at me because look at it. I mean, I know it doesn't look pretty, but you know what? I just kind of dry fitted this and it works. I made myself a little bracket that's gonna replace the mounting points. It's the, the holes on the outer edges of this. Um, the mounting points that would have fastened uh, to the plastic, that will now mount to that metal frame that's left on the inside of the center stack. And then the AC control will go ahead and mount to the other holes that are on this. But yeah, now that you guys have had your initial reaction to this, 
really think about the fact that all I used to make this was the sheet metal and some aviation snips right there that I also bought today. So I had none of this stuff. I don't really work with metal. Um, and honestly, that's not bad if you think about it. And you know what? If it functions right, you know, I'm telling you guys out there that are like me and don't have any experience, um, as long as it functions and this is something you're not going to see anyways and you put your heart into it, you tried your best, that's all that matters because no one's going to see this ultimately when it's behind all the plastic stuff um, and all the coverings and whatnot. Um, it really just needs to hold that AC control tight and it will. But yeah, let's go ahead and do a quick rundown how I made this and then we'll jump back in the car and finish this thing off. So here's the metal bracket that actually is in every single Fiero. Um, it is built into the top of the upright center stack in the inside of the car. Um, and what I was planning on doing uh, earlier was actually using that thicker aluminum and making some brackets like this on both sides. They would kind of fit in behind like so. And then I somehow kind of fasten under those holes and then these points would stick out and then I would mount my AC. Actually, I think I had it backwards. Yeah, it's gonna be like that. And then I would mount the AC. The problem with this bracket is that it's really too thick to bend really um, tightly. And especially where in this situation, everything is so put together so closely that I really, you know, having something off, you know, even a couple centimeters or less, it's not gonna work. Um, so this is just too thick to be able to bend precisely enough with limited tools. So I kind of had to say, you know what, that's not gonna work. Uh, let's start from scratch. So today I went and got the sheet metal. So I went ahead and looked at my opening here, which is right here. That's where the AC uh, controller goes. And I said, okay, Garrett, let's see how wide of a piece of metal I would need for a bracket. So I went ahead and just roughly cut off a section that would be about that size. And then I kind of narrowed it up a little bit so I could slide it up in here around all these lips and around these edges. Uh, so it would fit in nice and tight. So I had at that point a solid piece of metal in here. Then what I did was used a marker while it was back there and kind of marked out where this hole, this hole, this hole, that hole would lie. Now notice that these two upper holes um, that I've been pointing at, they are kind of set back a little bit. So I didn't actually make those holes until after I did some cutting because what I would do is then bend, you can see back here how that metal is bent down. You have to account a little bit for that lost length of metal because it's going in a different um, different direction. Um, so once I took care of that later, then I did those holes last. Um, and I actually, I have a, a drill press and I've got um, different things that I can use to drill into the metal. Uh, but unfortunately I couldn't find my family's uh, electric drill. Um, and then the drill press, this, I, I'm not prepared essentially. So what I ended up doing um, was just using these sheet metal screws and um, my, my arm strength and hand strength and went and pierced through all these things with those screws. Um, definitely, if you've got um, some drill bits and a drill, that would be much quicker. Um, but you know, like I'm kind of just showing you guys that really you can get a lot of work done. Uh, maybe it won't look the best, but it's gonna work and you can do it without a lot of tools. So lesson learned. I know I gotta keep saying yeah and so and whatever, but it's just the way I talk, I'm Californian. Um, but anyhow, once I had all those bits cut out, um, you pretty much just kind of look at what you're working with. You know that you need to mount in these spots so you can cut on the metal accordingly to be able to bend things in the orientations they need to be while leaving things straight to mount to like where your AC would mount to. Because obviously the AC thing, uh, the controller, all of its mounts are flat, but then this thing has some bends so you cut accordingly so that way you can fit all that stuff. Um, I feel like it's kind of straightforward. You just have to sit back and think about it before you do any cuts or make any holes because you can't undo that. Um, so think everything through before you do your action. And at this point, I think we are now ready to go ahead and slap it back into the car and make this thing look a little more complete because right now it looks kind of shitty. Oh, I've got some paper towels up there. That's really classing it up. Um, I've got tools all over the seat and there's stuff down there and stuff missing from here. It just looks like a big mess. So let's go ahead and start slapping things back in there and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and take a look. Look, I moved this slider. Look at that. That is totally nice. This thing doesn't move at all. Look at that, guys. That's in there really good. That is nice. That is really cool. I, I am definitely, I am proud of myself. Uh, that is probably... That may not be the biggest thing I've ever done. Like, you know, working on the actual engine of this vehicle has been kind of impressive to me too, uh, considering like a year ago, I had like done nothing besides like oil changes and stuff before. 
Um, but now this thing actually impresses me a lot because, you know, I actually had to think about how everything would fit and I was using, you know, different material, metal, um, which, you know, I've done some like woodworking, like growing up and stuff. But I've never really had a lot of experience with metal. And, you know, obviously, yeah, I know this isn't like a big thing. Um, I, I pretty much just used like industrial scissors to cut it and stuff. But I'm definitely, I'm, I'm really impressed with this. This is cool. And I fixed something that was actually broken and made it function again. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all this stuff back together and probably have some dinner. I don't know, there's my watch, but it's, it's dinner time. And then I will go ahead and kind of just let you guys see how it all looks when everything is totally put back nice. Um, maybe clean this thing up a little bit too. I think there's some crap on the carpet and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I'm, I am self-satisfied with this project. Uh, that, that is pretty cool. I'm glad that that worked out nicely. Um, because I was pretty disappointed yesterday when the bracket didn't work, that whole idea is just too thick. But uh, sheet metal is a lot easier to work with. Um, definitely, yeah, for someone that's beginning, um, if you can fashion whatever you want to make out of sheet metal versus a thicker or just harder, a less malleable metal, um, then definitely sheet metal is the way to go. And then those aviation shears work like a charm. And guess what? When it's all said and done, you don't even see that metal bracket thing that I made. So it doesn't even matter, you know, it didn't look great, it didn't look perfect. Um, it was kind of bendy and whatnot, you know, kind of, you can kind of see a little bit down there, but it doesn't matter because it functions and you don't even see it. I knew it would be like that. For something like this, as long as it functions, honestly, you're good, you're golden. So there you have it. That was the final video, the final project video of the 1988 Pontiac Fiero notchback that had the Iron Duke. Um, the Iron Duke not really being relevant in this video because that center stack issue with it being kind of crumbly, shitty plastic that ages really poorly over time um, is applicable to all the Fieros. Uh, very many Fieros have this problem and it's really hard to actually find that whole substructure of the center tunnel and center stack um, that's actually intact that you can buy on eBay or anything. They're usually all a little bit damaged somewhere. Um, that one was quite damaged in a few places. Um, but overall, wasn't too bad, and definitely salvageable, like I kind of tried to exemplify in this video. I hope this video was able to kind of show you guys that, you know, a little bit of ingenuity, MacGyvering, whatever you're going to call it, I'll justify it however I can, you know, do best. Um, but the point is that anything you guys can do with a little bit of creativity and limited tools that you might have on hand and kind of iffy materials, but something that you can work with, in this case, the tin was really easy for me to work with with the tools I had, um, you know, all that can kind of come together and you can get a final product that's going to be, you know, resulting in something that's usable. Um, in this case, it solved my problem. That, you know, AC thing that was really wibbly wobbly. Yeah, when you pull all that stuff apart, it doesn't look that great, but hey, the result was the same as if you really engineered something real special and pretty, whatever. Um, and so I'm really happy with that. There are some people that might look at it and say, wow, you did a real shit job and you just covered it up. To me, I say, hey, I took something that's kind of hard to fix and I made it really pretty okay. You know, everything you're gonna touch is gonna be fine. And it really didn't take a lot of money, time, um, or trouble to fix it. And so at least in my eyes, I can appreciate what I did with this project. Um, obviously it doesn't matter though, because this car is now out of my life. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully it was worth me posting it even though it's kind of retroactive because this is, these uh, video clips have been sitting on my computer for a long time now and I just got sidetracked with so many other projects and then I really wasn't sure if this was going to be relevant anymore because that kind of storyline of that Fiero kind of went to the wayside. Um, but I figured, you know, it'd be kind of worth sharing with you guys anyways because maybe it, that idea, you guys could either copy it if you want to do, maybe execute it a little bit better than I did, um, but you guys could kind of fix, you know, this same issue on your own Fieros, or maybe it kind of give you at least a little bit of an idea of how to make this idea better and kind of execute it better than I did. Um, but anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you appreciated the video or liked what I did, give it a thumbs up, or if you have some better ideas, kind of working on what I did, or really just any comments at all, please leave them below. Um, and until next time, guys, thank you guys so much, so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate your guys' support. Um, I know I'm kind of keeping everything is a little crazy lately with all the cars kind of disappearing and swapping out things here and there, but I'm trying to stick with the same families. I still have a Fiero, I still have a Corvette. Um, we're just trying to have a good time here on the channel and I hope you guys continue to enjoy the good times with me. And I can make some new content for you guys coming up here in the new year. So, yeah. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching.